Hey everyone, I'm Mike from theparkprodigy.com and on today's video, we're gonna break down the best tips and tricks for using early park admission over at Universal Orlando Resort. And early park admission is such an amazing benefit and a kind of extra perk over in the parks. And it's very, very popular, of course, because so many families do wanna take advantage of that extra hour. So if you are in the process of planning a Universal Orlando trip and you plan to take advantage of early park admission, just be sure to stick around until the end of this video. And if you are planning that trip and you do need a little additional help, just be sure to hit that subscribe button as we do have a lot more similar videos coming out in the coming weeks. But as always, I'm very excited, so let's go get started. So when breaking down the Universal Orlando Resort parks, there are three parks that we have to consider. There are the two main theme parks, which is Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios Florida. And then there is the water park, which is Volcano Bay. Now it's important to understand that early park admission is not always being held at all three parks. So, you know, when we talk about early park admission on our channel, it's really important to then take it one step further and understand, okay, well, which parks are going to be open for early park admission? Now, this is all run through Universal Orlando Resort, right? So typically, when we look at the parks and which parks they have open, it will typically be one of the main two parks, which is Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios Florida. And then when Volcano Bay is open, Volcano Bay will have early park admission. Now, of course, during some of the busier times of year, you can see both of the parks, uh, main two parks open for early park admission, Islands and Universal Studios Florida. But again, just keep that in mind as you are planning your Universal Orlando vacation. Be sure to go check the Universal Orlando website or check the app. Typically, I guess here's a hidden tip and trick inside of the tip and trick. The app almost always has um, the early park admission hours updated first. So I would always check the app first and then go to the website. Or if you're on the website, don't see it, go to the app. Also, another tip and trick within the tip and trick is typically Universal will release the early park admission hours 30 days out. So, you know, like right now it's almost December 2023. So we'll start seeing the January 2024 early park admission hour. So it's typically always 30 days out. But let's jump into the next tip and trick. And early park admission is almost always held at Islands of Adventure Park at this point in time. Now, Islands of Adventure really is the most popular of the two parks, specifically when it comes to early park admission. Universal's almost always leaning towards this park now. That wasn't always the case in the past, especially around Halloween Horror Nights, which is held over at Universal Studios Florida. Because Halloween Horror Nights was going on, that park would close a little bit earlier, and we would typically see early park admission over at Universal Studios Florida to kind of you know entice guests to go and hang out at that park. We didn't see that this last year, and I think it has a lot to do with just the fact of how popular Islands of Adventure is, and it does have the most popular rides. So we have been seeing specifically Islands of Adventure open for early park admission. And in my honest opinion, if you're trying to save the most time, that is really the park that you want to use um, early park admission on. Now, over to the next tip and trick. This is kind of a funny one, and we've to we've spoken about this in the past. And this one would be, you know, based off of the first couple tips and tricks that we gave. If you are specifically going to Universal Orlando, and you are specifically, let's say, you know, an early riser, you will want to go to Universal Orlando during during one of the busier times of year, specifically, like we said, because that's when you will have the best chance of having both parks open for early park admission. Now, it seems kind of counterintuitive because you, you know, you're kind of going during some of the busier times of year. So I guess maybe though, just keep that in mind. And if you are visiting during some of the busier times of year, you can plan around having both parks open for early park admission. And that kind of brings us to the next tip and trick. And that is one of the early, uh, you know, one of the busier times of year when both parks might be open for early park admission. And typically we see it being spring break during the early summer months around the you know, holiday weekends like Labor Day, Memorial Day weekend, uh, Thanksgiving, and then of course Christmas. All right, moving over to the next tip and trick, and that would be to kind of understand the rides, right? Which rides are open for early park admission? Over at Islands of Adventure Park, and one of the reasons why it's so popular, we do have Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, we have the Jurassic World Velocicoaster, we have Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, and then we do have Harry Potter and the Flight of the Hippogriff. Moving over to you Universal Studios Florida, we do have Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, and then we have Despicable Me. So when you break down the rides, as you could see, Islands of Adventure really does have the most popular rides. It has the most rides as well, and that's really why we kind of tend to see it being the most popular park for early admission. 
And of course, this is really important. That kind of brings me to my next tip and trick. Understand which rides are most important to you and your family. And that will help you, you know, kind of try to figure out like, hey, do we want to take advantage of early parking mission? Do we not care? Because we really just want to go see a bunch of shows. You know, so definitely understand which rides um, are going on. And that will, again, help you come up with a game plan. And jumping into the next one, I would say really for guests, if you're trying to figure out and you're not even sure where to start, if you're looking to save the most time and to get on the most rides, just like it sounds, we would almost always recommend to start out at Islands of Adventure Park. And essentially the order that I would go on the rides would be Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure first, the Jurassic World Velocicoaster second, and then Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey third. And if you've been watching our channel, you already know if you're going on Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, make sure you take Dramamine or just be familiar with this ride that you might get motion sickness. But jumping into the next tip and trick, and for guests who are looking for more of a laid back and chill morning, you're just looking to you know, get into the parks and just, you know, you do, you're not crazy about rides. You really just want to take advantage of early parking mission. We would say to jump over and see if Universal Studios Florida has early parking mission, specifically in Diagon Alley. You, I've spoken about this a lot. It's not as crowded as Islands of Adventure. It has really, really good vibes in the morning because it's not crowded, especially if you have one of the Harry Potter and your kids have the Harry Potter interactive wands. You can really go have a, an amazing like low-key morning over in Diagon Alley and just relax and kind of take it all in. And again, if you're planning a Universal Orlando trip and you're not sure where to start, but you do need a little additional help, we're going to leave a link um, in our show notes. We have some free pre-made park plans, which essentially will tell you exactly like which rides to go on and when, specifically starting with early park admission. So you can use that as you know your starting point for your own family vacation. You can go grab that absolutely free. We will leave a link to that in our show notes if you do want to take advantage of that. All right, so moving over to the next tip and trick. And now that you've really figured out you know which park you want to take advantage of for early park admission, maybe it's both. But it is important to understand that you know you will pretty much have a different game plan and you'll show up differently for each park. And what I mean by that is for Islands of Adventure Park, because it's so popular, popular when we are helping our clients and our guests we always recommend to show up 60 minutes before early park admission starts and pretty much that's going to be when city walk opens so if early park admission you know is at 8 a.m we would recommend that you show up at 7 a.m when city walk opens and what will happen is you will really be some of the first guests online and you might be like mike you're crazy why would i show up and wait to get into the park for an hour but my opinion on this has always been i would rather wait when the park isn't open because you're not you're not missing out on anything right and then essentially what will happen at that point is because you are showing up an hour before pretty much the earliest you could show up you will really be like some of the first guests into the park and you will get straight onto Hagrid's Magical Creatures. Like, you'll get straight on that ride. We have heard stories from, you know, guests who are like, oh, early park admission is at 8 o'clock, so they show up at 8 o'clock, but there's already a huge line at that point, and essentially what will happen is once you get into the park, then you end up waiting 60 minutes on Hagrid's anyway, right, which kind of defeats the purpose of taking advantage of early park admission. So I know it, it seems kind of crazy, but that's my honest opinion. I've done this myself. This works the best. This will get you on to, like we said, you're trying to get onto the most popular rides as quickly as possible to save yourself your time later on in the day. This is the best way to do that. And you will get onto the three rides we mentioned earlier, Hagrid's, Velocicoaster, Forbidden Journey. You'll get on those rides within the first hour to hour and a half um, if you listen to this tip. This one specific tip will save you, my honest opinion, up to three hours. So I would definitely do this over to Universal Studios Florida. You'll see because it's not as many rides and again, it's not as popular. You have a little bit more flexibility there. We typically will still recommend to show up 30 to 45 minutes before the early park admission starts. And again, in my opinion, just because it's not as many you know, people, you'll still be able to get onto either you know, um, escape from Gringotts fairly quickly or a minion. All right, moving over, the next tip and trick is make sure you keep your tickets out. Now, this is going to be uh, very, very important, especially over at Islands of Adventure. So what happens is guests will scan their ticket to get into the park, but then you're going to walk about you know a couple minutes, and then Universal is going to check essentially your early park admission credentials again. So you need to have that stuff out, your tickets, your you know um, hotel key, essentially whatever is showing that you have early park admission keep that out because you will need to show that again do not lose that if you keep it out right i i am the type of person if i have something in my hand i i'll get distracted i'll put it somewhere like don't lose your ticket 
that's very important as well. But keep it out because they are going to check it a second time. And again, you don't want to get to that checkpoint and then you're scrambling. You know, it's in your wallet, it's in your pocket. Like you're losing time at that point. So keep your tickets out. That's very, very important. Over to the next tip and trick. We're talking a lot about the main two parks, but I would say don't sleep on early park admission at Volcano Bay. And just like it sounds, it is early mornings. But when you think of water parks, right, most families don't go to a water park that early. You kind of want to, you know, make sure you're getting there when the sun is, you know, at, at peak times, right? So it kind of, um, again, it makes sense that we've heard a lot of families will get a ton of stuff done, even if it's only, uh, you know, the extra half hour that Volcano Bay is. I actually, I think I had a note in earlier in the video. I don't know if I mentioned this, but the Volcano Bay, unlike the other two parks, the main two parks, which are an extra hour in the morning, Volcano Bay typically is almost always just a half hour, but you'll get a lot more done in that half hour and it surprises a lot of people. So don't skip the early park admission over at Volcano Bay. And that actually brings me to my next tip and trick. And I would say be prepared because these are really, really early mornings. So especially if you're taking advantage of, you know, going during the busier times of year, Early park admission, I would say, typically will start around 8 a.m., right? But during the busier times of year, we have seen early park admission start around 7 a.m. So if you're really following our tip and trick, and that is to show up an hour before early park admission over at Islands of Adventure, dude, that is a 6 a.m. start time at the parks. That means that you have to be up and kids, you know, everyone's getting ready, dressed, all that good stuff, like 5 a.m., these are early mornings, and it's important to understand that because, again, if you're hitting the parks at 7 a.m., you might need to go back to your hotel and take, you know, an afternoon break or just make sure you know that and you kind of you know, plan that into your day to slow down because if you're staying or if you plan to stay in the parks until they close at night, and again, busier times of year, they could close around, you know, 10 p.m. at night. 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. is a long day in the theme park, so just be familiar and be aware of you know those kind of extended hours and then kind of talking about you know getting there and for early park admission start this next tip and trick would be my honest opinion is that the best hotels to use for early park admission are always going to be the official universal orlando hotels and again we help a lot of families plan their universal orlando trip my honest opinion is when you know when guests start to look at the official universal orlando hotels or some of those friendly neighbor hotels you know, some of those friendly neighbor hotels have some, you know, amazing perks like free breakfast, free parking, stuff like that. But what happens is they they will market free transportation, but the free transportation is not like Universal Orlando. Universal Orlando free transportation to the hotels is essentially every 15 minutes, like once they start, every 15 minutes, those buses and transportation to the parks are running. Same thing coming home at night, every 15 minutes, right? That's not the case at over at the friendly neighbor hotels. It would, you know, pickup might be 8 a.m., 8.30, and 9 o'clock to take guests to the park. Well, if the first pickup is at 8 a.m. and we just established that typically early park admissions at 8 a.m., it doesn't line up. And what happens for a lot of families is we have to help them come up with, you know, backup plans like take an Uber or you'll pay for parking, which is 27 bucks a day, and it kind of negates the, you know, free parking. So my honest opinion is, it's, I think it's just the most convenient, and if you're taking advantage of early parking mission, I would strongly consider staying at a Universal Orlando hotel. And I've stayed at them all. I've stayed at you know, Friendly Neighbors, all the Universal Orlando hotels. Especially, you'll see if you really follow the tips and tricks in this video, you will get onto the most popular rides within the first couple hours, and you'll have time to go back to your hotels. And the way Universal Orlando is situated, everything is closer together, including the hotels, I just think it's really, really convenient, and I think it's, <laughs> my opinion, is it's the most enjoyable way to take a Universal Orlando trip. But over to the next one, and that is, of course, if you are thinking about possibly staying at a Universal Orlando hotel, and you're staying at one of those premier hotels, which give you the free express pass, or let's just say you're upgrading and you're getting the free express pass. Combining the express pass and early park admission is a, like a one-two punch, a great way to get the most out of your day. And specifically, the reason why is because there's one ride Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, which is included in early park admission when Islands of Adventure is open, but it's not included with the Universal Express Pass. So what you would want to do if you have the Express Pass is show up early, take advantage of Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, maybe even jump onto the Velocicoaster, and then of course you could start using your Express Pass and skip even more of the lines.
And now jumping over to Universal Studios Florida, and we would say, again, there's only two rides open over in Universal Studios Florida for early parking mission. You know, Despicable Me is going to be the first ride you see when you walk in. I would almost always just walk past that ride and go back to Diagon Alley, and I would almost always start my day with Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. Just because I kind of see, I see Harry Potter having a, a longer average wait time later in the day. And you can always go hop on Harry Potter, escape from Gringotts quickly, then walk back over to the script with me and hop on that. And I still think you'll save a, a tremendous amount of time. But a couple of last minute Harry Potter tips and tricks specifically for early parking mission is don't forget that a lot of times the Leaky Cauldron and the Three Broomsticks will be open for early parking mission. Those are the two Harry Potter restaurants. So again, if you're planning to spend a couple days in Universal, and you just like being in the parks early, you've gone on the rides already, you're just looking to get, you know, a breakfast in. And these restaurants are extremely popular. They don't take reservations. So again, the, the lines can be you know, pretty long for the restaurants as well. Take advantage of that during early parking mission. And of course, don't forget, you can't forget about Butterbeer. They do serve Butterbeer for early parking mission. So if you are <laughs> trying to get a Butterbeer again with very little weight or crowds, take advantage of it during early parking mission. Another great one that we love, if you're avoiding the rides, is don't forget about Ollivander, specifically over in Diagon Alley, like I said, where you do have less people, less crowds. Ollivander's is open for early parking mission in Diagon Alley, so you can go and you can take advantage of the store with little weights. And then this might be one of my favorites, and that is when Universal does have both of the parks open, one of the cool things that we have found is that they also will have the Hogwarts Express open for early park admission. Now, of course, you do need that park-to-park -park ticket to ride the Hogwarts Express, but this can be another great way to experience the Hogwarts Express with very little wait times. So be sure to keep an eye on the schedule as it gets closer to your trip. And so that is it, everyone. That is the complete little tip and trick guide to using early park admission over at Universal Studios Florida. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you are excited for your Universal Orlando vacation. And if you are in the process of planning a Universal Orlando trip, like I said, and you do need a little additional help, just be sure to go check out our website, theparkprodigy.com, or you could sign up for those free park plans in the description and use them as a starting point for your trip. And as a special gift for sticking around till the end of this video, if you have not booked your trip yet and you do wanna save a few extra dollars while booking, we do have a special promo code that you can go use on all multi-day ticket orders over at theparkprodigy.com and that promo code is going to be YouTube25. You can use that on multi-day ticket orders of $700 or more. Or for guests who are looking to take advantage of one of those Universal Orlando hotels that we mentioned, we do have a bunch of promotions that are running right now on Universal Orlando vacation packages where guests can save up to $250. And if you do wanna learn more and help you plan a hassle-free Universal Orlando vacation, I'm gonna leave a link in our show notes. You could just request a free quote and we will be sure to send you that discounted pricing. But I think that's all the time we have for today. Thank you all again so, so much for checking out this video. And until next time, I will talk to you soon.